Welcome to the Wizards of Ecom, your no fluff playbook for online success. Each episode is fully packed with actionable tactics you can implement in your business right now. Take your life to a higher level and excel in your online success. It's time to work on you and your business. Let's do this. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Wizards of Ecom. This is Naomi, your host. And today I am joined by my awesome, very amazing co host from our sister show, the Wizards of Ecom Espanol. Vanessa, welcome to the show. Hi, Naomi. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very excited to be in this side of the show, the English one. The English one, yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, Vanessa, you've been so, so, so proactive in our group. Um, but would you also like mind presenting yourself a bit more so people also know you from the English side? <laughs> sure. So my name is Vanessa Hung. I'm CEO and found founder of Online Seller Solutions. We are a full service agency that helps sellers to solve their issues in Seller Central. Um, I'm also the co-host of Wizard of Ecom en Español. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm an active member of the group. And yes, I'm a seller too. So I have a small private label. And yeah, that's, that's about me. <laughs> I think that's more than enough. So <laughs> brilliant presentation. <laughs> Love that. Vanessa, the reason that I wanted to have you on the show, first off, um, you get a for a great presentation, I heard only praises about it that I couldn't attend or only half of it or a few minutes of it. And I was like, dang, and that was a topic that I was super interested about, specifically account health and IPI and basically the things that people are not interested about that it's the most important when you're selling on the Amazon platform. So that's something that I would love to dig deeper into. Uh, first off, also for beginners to understand what it takes to be on the platform and the metrics that they should be aware of. And also for advanced sellers to know exactly how to prepare for Q4 in this scenario, because Q4 is like knocking on the door and um, tips and tricks that you have or you've seen um, helpful when were applied. Does it make sense? Sure, perfect. I'm, awesome. I'm actually all about to talk about unsexy Amazon stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the unsexy, it's a must. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> so. Yes. All right, so for new sellers, if they are going to start the account, right, they have the account. Usually what's happening is like they are being sold on dreams, on courses, on all this stuff. They, let's say they have their first private label stuff. They start selling, but they're not aware of the, what are the things that they should be aware of? So first off, what is account health and how should they take care of it? Okay, well, yeah, you, you touch a point very important and it's, the main thing or one of the reasons why I do what I do. So I, I get a lot of content out there to teach sellers and how it's the real Amazon. Because as, as you mentioned, the courses sell you something that is not completely real or it's a, an incomplete information. Mm -hmm. So first of all, so if we're talking about a new seller and I don't want to get into the other side of things, but talking about account health, what is account health? Uh, I see account health as the court or, or the, the law system, the justice system that Amazon has internally. Because I have this theory that actually Amazon is a country and it's, it has a government, right? So we are part of the citizens. The other side of the citizens are the, the customers, the consumers. And the account health for us as sellers, as citizens, is the place where they enforce all their rules or their, their laws, right? So a lot of sellers are not familiar with it until they get something there. They get a lawsuit or a, or a complaint, something that can damage the um, account uh, ac like status, right? Mm -hmm. So in that regard, account health has three main areas. So the big one is the policy compliance. That's everything that Amazon has in their policies, the TOS, everything that is written, we need to follow. And if we don't follow, Amazon can make a complaint or customers can complain about your performance and you will get a notification there. That's based on the policy. The other size or the other two sizes are the uh, defective rate, which is that Amazon uh, the, and this is one of the biggest uh, policies of Amazon at all, uh, overall, because they care a lot about customer experience. 
you cannot have more than 1% of the effective rate in your orders, both FBA and FBM. So when you get, when you overpass that uh, threshold, that percentage, you can get, not, like you will get a notification, of course, and you can even get suspended for it. Mm -hmm. So knowing what are the rules that Amazon has to play in the platform is extremely important because if we don't know and we do things wrong, we will be like putting at risk the account and we will know through account health. The other side of the account health is the shipment. When well, this is more for FBM sellers. Uh, so you need to have a valid tracking number. You need to have an accurate like shipping time and, and all of that in regarding of shipping. Mm -hmm. and, and there are thresholds there as well that a certain percentage. So I think it's like uh, you need to have 95% of the tracking numbers need to be accurate, something like that, mm -hmm. um, and so on. So every time a seller goes um, like over those thresholds, they will get a notification and that can put their account at risk. One of the big things that Account Health has now is that on top of it, there is a bar that tells you what's the status of your account. So it will, take you, it, it will tell you if it's good, if it's at risk or if it's suspended, which is like the red part that we don't wanna get. And everything the account held needs to be um, approached or, or appealed. So one of the mistakes that people make is they go there, they start selling whatever model they use and they get something in the account health and they don't know how to deal with or they say like, oh, not really. And, and that's something happened. There are some times that we get complaints and we're like, this is a, a big error. Mm -hmm. But that the complaint is there is already a problem. And Amazon asks you to appeal to every complaint that you have over there. So you need to be proactive. This is the area where sellers need to be extremely proactive because not responding the complaints can get you suspended as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if it's not your fault, it can get you suspended just by no replying. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I, I really love your analogy of it's like a country and it's like, yeah, I really like how you put it. Like, look, you if you don't know the rules, you might not obey the rules and then you just get kicked out of the country. You know? so yes. It's yes. exactly like that. And it's truly like this is what I'm saying all the time. OK, it's a selling spread for or a sales channel, but yeah, it would be ideal to know exactly the rules because then you can play by the rules, you can obey the rules or you can find your way around the rules as well, you know? And if you don't know those things, unfortunately, as you were saying about account health, people are just coming and just like selling and just like, yeah, Amazon is so good or Amazon is so bad and they don't understand what Amazon is. So this is why, yeah, I love that. 100%. And a common mistake that I see, even as sellers that are not beginners, is that when we start selling in amazon.com and we turn on the NARS program, which opens up the possibility of selling in Mexico and Canada with our own fulfillment in the US, like meaning using FBA US to fulfill those orders, mm -hmm. uh, it happens that our catalog creates automatically in those marketplaces. And you can get account health notifications in those marketplaces for those ASINs that are, for example, allowed to sell in the US, but they are not allowed to sell in Canada side. Mm -hmm. And you say like, hey, but Amazon, we don't really plan on selling that, or we didn't even sell that on Canada, but you still get a notification. And you need to, you know, you need to tackle that. That's an issue. And the, only by creating the ASIN in your catalog, you can get an account health notification and a policy complaint just by having it in the catalog, even if you don't sell it, if, even if you have never sold the item. So that's a big mistake that I see. People like only caring about the US marketplace when they have opened Canada and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So I really recommend you. So right now, all the, seller, uh, all the sellers that are listening, go to your account health in Canada and Mexico and check if you have something there. And if you have, address it as soon as possible because the worst thing that can happen is that they shut you down in those marketplaces. And sometimes just by, just by being attached to the same like, kind of seller, they can suspend you in the US. So it's, 
it's terrible. Mm, that's brilliant. And I, I love that you mentioned, okay, they might not even be aware. So here, what would be the process if, look, this is happening to you, they either suspend you or flag you or something, and it's like, what do you do then? Are you deleting the listings or what's, what's the step there that you take? It really depends on what they complain about. I do not recommend deleting the ASIN immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like that process when somebody gets an account health complaint. The first thing that you need to do is read very, very well the email that they send you. So in the email that Amazon sends, they will explain specifically why is the reason they uh, like send you this complaint, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes sellers overlook that email and say like, oh, whatever, let me fix it that way. Let me just delete it from the catalog. And that's not it. You need to know what Amazon is asking you to do and why you got that. So this comes like the side of the research process. You need to research first, okay, what, what did trigger this complaint? What is Amazon saying about it? And sometimes in the same email, you get like a uh, set of instructions to solve it. Okay, so there is not magic secret here. Amazon really tells you what to do and everything is written in their policies. Um, there are different complaints. There are, I think, about 13 different complaints. And all of them are handled differently. So some of them are based on violations on, the, on Amazon policy directly. Some of them are part of, their, of, or, of shopper experience. So for example, there is one that's called a product condition complaint. So if a customer complained that you sold an item that is new, but actually they got something that was used or they got something that was inauthentic, that relates directly to the orders, to the customers and their experience. For all of them, or well, for most of them, not all, for most of them, you need to appeal. You need to write what is called a POA, a plan of action. Um, the plan of action has three uh, sections. So the first section is the root cause of the problem. And this root cause, normally I always look for the email that Amazon sent to find out what was the reason. No, and then maybe do like a quick research in my account to see like, okay, let me see what, what was really the order, what did the customer said, or let me follow up with this brand or this and that. And, and you, you tell Amazon there what's the root cause. After that, you need to explain all the steps that you took to uh, address the, the complaint in the, in the present moment. So for example, you got a product condition complaint and a customer said that it was used. So what's the thing that you do? You start, uh, I don't know, making, uh, requesting a bin check of all the units that you have in FBA. Uh, you get into the listing and check if you have it like set up the offer right. So making sure that it was actually new and you didn't list it as other, under other conditions. Uh, making sure that all the pro descriptions are accurate. That's important. And sometimes I feel sellers um, just overlook those, those steps. Like they're like, but everything is right. And sometimes it's not. And I'm going to tell you, and this relates to a big part of, of the work that I do is that the catalog is not something that is fixed, meaning that you will get, you will input your listing or you will upload your listing one time, right? And it can happen that other sellers, competitors, hijacker, or even Amazon changes information in the listing. So when they do that, that creates a problem for the customer experience because if they change something and then the customer got all the things, and, and I can put an example here. I actually work with a client that has this issue. They were selling a product and it was a bestseller. A hijacker came and changed the picture, right? So buyers start buying the product and they were like, oh my God, but I ordered A and I got B, what is this? And they start getting a lot of account health issues because of that AC, because they, it was a fast selling item and customers complain, 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 even to a point that they were super close to have their account suspended just because of that. So we need to make sure of that those things are right. And that's what Amazon looks 
for you to do in the second section of the plan, plan of action, which is the actions that you took right now to solve the issue. And that can also mean um, sending a buyer message to the customer, like explaining or replying the seller feedback, something like that. And the last section is the measures that you are gonna do to prevent this happening in the future. Um, and that goes like making sure that your catalog is right, training your people to prep the units correctly, or you know having a, a process to follow up with bad customer reviews or seller feedback. Now that we have the opportunity as brands to reply back to bad reviews, that's awesome. Before we didn't have that, so that that's now a part of my POA. So that's now part of my my plan of actions. So I put there like we um, we do a customer service for our clients, uh, you know, stuff stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. And I love that they also like mentioned about the POA and the whole process. And I think here the next question would be like, what are the top three mistakes that newbies are making here in this process? Mm, okay, so. The majority of persons the, or of sellers that get complaints in the account health normally are not selling their own brand, mm -hmm. right? So private label and brands have less account health issues because they are not dealing with a lot of um, different brands. One of the biggest uh, account health thing is the IP complaint, which is intellectual property complaint, where the brand that you're selling can claim that you're selling counterfeit products or that you're using their pictures, stuff like that. That's a really common uh, complaint that a lot of newbies get when they start selling on Amazon using the wholesale or arbitrage model because they will go to the store or they will go to the distributor, get the brand, you know, they are ungated it to sell the brand. And then when they start selling one, one week, like one month into that, they get an, an account health complaint for IPI. Mm -hmm. So that's a big thing. You need to start um, kind of researching that. I know there is a tool called IP Alert, mm -hmm. which is like a Chrome extension. So if you ever go to a listing that you want to sell, IP Alerts will tell you if the brand uh, makes account health claims. And that, that for me, it's a no-go. So if I'm a new person that is going to start selling and I see this alert on one ASIN, even if it gave me like thousand like in, in my return, like, I don't know, ROI, incredible, super great margins, I wouldn't take it because dealing with uh, an account health issues for IP is a little complicated, especially if you don't have the right uh, invoices or or you know, the, the right documentation to prove that those units are authentic. Um, that's the biggest one. I think that's one of the biggest for newbies. And it's the, I, I believe it's the most frustrating one because imagine starting, a bit, starting this business and going through the process of getting a nice product, having, finding the product, putting it on Amazon, sending it, and you are all excited. And now it gets shut down. And when, when that happens, you cannot sell the item. So imagine, you know, there are people out there that like went through this process and they need to see what they're gonna do with all the units that they purchased. And that's something that can kill a, a person that is starting a small, you know, like can kill the business, the, the cash flow, it's, it's complicated. That's the main, that, that would say it's the biggest one. I, I was just smiling when you were saying they get excited. This is so typical, like, yeah, I can do it. It's like, I am on the top of the world, you know? I was like, yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> you're not. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I think that's the most like common thing that uh, you are facing. Like, oh yeah, you think that, you know, un until you are proven wrong, you know? So Exactly, really, exactly. Really, I like that. Yes. Um, one other, I'll say for private label sellers or for brands, um, one of the things that it ha can happen to them, it will be more around the violation of policies. 
So, for example, not knowing how to set up a, a listing and maybe put in HTML or, or something wrong and they can get shut down because of um, restricted or no listing policy violations or, or they have information that is not accurate or they're missing information. So they get restricted policy violations, stuff like that. And those relate more to you didn't re read the policy and we're going to punish you for this. But those are easier to solve because it, they depend on the seller. So you need to fix it. When, when we are working with people making complaints like customer or, or brands making you complaints and claims, that gets a little bit harder because there is another layer to the process. You need to fix that relationship, right? Got it. Yeah, which actually... That's a great point. It brought up the next question because you were saying things that people are doing. What are things that people are like the flawless and everything? It's like it's great to know, but it's like a lot, and you're doing already a lot. So, what are the top things that you should be aware? Like, okay, that's a clear no, or that's this is the way how to do it. Like, does mm. it make sense? Okay, thing. Like something to be prepared of that you don't have to go through the whole all the whole pages and policies and everything, but still be sure that you have that handled. Yes, actually, I I was kind of developing um, like the, the seven things of Amazon, uh -huh. you know, all, all the things that we can do that are like, no, no. Yeah. So I actually uh, have it here. Let me find it. So the red flags that I think that are um, mainly... So this is when we think that we can be smarter than Amazon. And I don't want to say that we cannot be smarter than Amazon, but it's very hard to be, right? Because they don't only have like the most amazing people working for them, but also they have a very robust like algorithm and computer that it's not very clever, but it will flag everything. Mm -hmm. So in my seven things, I wrote... Uh, having more than one account and this is oh my god this is something for for beginners this is something that happens very often i get very often people start selling right or they open an account and they start selling they got an ip complaint or they got suspended for whatever reason it really doesn't matter and they're like okay let me open another account mm -hmm. you can actually not do that and some people don't even know because they don't take the time to read the policies and i understand who wants to read like the constitution? Like nobody, like only lawyers do that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's our duty to be informed at least. So that's one thing that you, should, should, you shouldn't have unless you have Amazon permission. So you need to do it the right way. And people get desperate when they get their account suspended. And I get this every time in my DMs. Hey, Vanessa, my account got suspended. I open another one, I got suspended. And I open another one, I got suspended. What can I do? And I'm like, not opening another one, it will be a better idea. And we start like fixing the one that got suspended, right? Uh, that's, that's one thing. And I see it very, it, it's very common in beginner sellers, for beginner sellers. Um, the other one I have is um, sending fake documents. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very like, but this falls very good into what we were talking about, about account health, is that sometimes, Sellers get desperate because they imagine you get an IP claim, right? And you have a lot of units in FBA that will kill your whole cash flow. And you think you're clever than Amazon and you will say, okay, let me like forge this invoice and let me put here or, or let me make up this information and send it to Amazon. That's the worst thing that you can do because they know. And most of the times they will like flag that and suspend it to spend you immediately. And that's very hard to come back from those kind of suspensions. Um, one that I, that I have that is very relevant lately is buying reviews. Mm -hmm. So buying reviews is the worst thing that you can do uh, now because of what happened with Amazon and the department of um, cost. I, I know what you're talking protection, about. Protection yeah, to yeah. the consumer. Yeah, yeah. The, the department, the Federal Department of Protection to a Consumer enforced very, like it's on top of Amazon to prevent 
people from faking reviews and buying reviews and doing all the stuff that the Chinese likes to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't advise you to go to that route. It's very easy to get suspended because of that. Um, the other thing I have, it's lying about the offer. So this is, this is something that people can do even not knowing that they are doing it. So for example, putting the wrong information into a listing or, or for example, sometimes I see for arbitrage sellers, they go to a store and they like get, I don't know, let's say a toy, a Lego, and the, the box is mm, damaged or maybe open and they just put like a tape on top of it to close it and they sell it as you. That's actually a violation to the policy and that's a red flag because Amazon really cares about the customer experience, their shopping experience. So you need to be very accurate on what is the information that you're putting there. Other thing that happens that I see uh, sellers, and I'm talking about sellers that are not well informed or, or they think they can be better than Amazon is sometimes they put the right uh, measurements or weight into the product to get shipping ship, yeah, to get shipping ship cheaper. Mm -hmm. So that that I see in in the past where sellers just treat that that those numbers to get a, a lower label and then get in trouble not only with Amazon but also with the provider of the shipping. So that that's bad. Sending uh, selling products that are fake. That's my next one. Of course. Okay, um, fake in this the, scenario. Uh, counterfeit. Okay. Counterfeit products. Mm -hmm. So that like buying from a Chinese, uh, uh, an an iPhone, and uh, that is not good, and then try to sell it on Amazon. That's that's terrible to do. And and honestly, this is common sense. Like I mean, if we if all the listeners here to the podcast, I bet that you are doing things right, and this may not apply apply to you, but. You ask me what are the things that are wrong, so I'm going to show you my seven things. Yeah. And the, the last two is um, you shouldn't communicate with um, customers uh, asking for their email address or for their physical address unless there is something uh, to make that case. So if you need to send a replacement or something like that, that's different. But outside of those uh, cases, you shouldn't communicate with them for, to ask anything, like mm -hmm. no reviews. Uh, Amazon has all their processes for you to request reviews, for you to uh, send another label or, or to solve issues, but it's not directly like, hey, give me your email, I'll send you whatever. So don't, drive, don't try to drive traffic from Amazon to other sites. That's the main reason why they, cross, they close that communication channel. And the last one, and I think this is very controversial, but I, I will like be firm on that, is that you shouldn't do retail drop shipping. And I know that I know sellers that are very successfully doing it, doing it, but it's a headache and unless you have the right process and and the risk tolerance to do so because they're gonna suspend your account, just don't do it at the beginning. Maybe if you get more experience later, go for it. But that's something that I won't recommend for newbies. That's brilliant, and I love it. And it, was this like a blog post or something? Like, did, did we yes, just know something? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. I we are we actually published it in our um, Spanish channel. So okay. we have a Spanish Instagram called Amazon at all hora, and we post that there. We haven't posted it in the English one, but that will come soon. And I don't know, this, I mean, those things are, are controversial, I think. There are what I think there are things on Amazon, but I like to play very white hat. So, I mean, we all know we can commit some things sometimes, but. Yeah. Yeah, don't play with fire, better not. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. And this was also a caveat for you guys so who, who are listening and watching now. So Vanessa <laughs> just gave you some golden nuggets there. Yeah. Brilliant. So I think the next 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 thing that I'm thinking of, like, okay, we talked about things that we should know, things that we are like, that those are must. Uh, we talked about what are the common mistakes. And here, the next segment would be Q4 is coming. How should someone prepare correctly for Q4? And what are the metrics that they should check on? 
let's say daily, weekly, monthly? Ooh, okay, interesting question, very broad. Um, I'll say to talk about what I, what I will do first. Okay. Um, and this is what I like the most about Amazon. I love the catalog. This is the area where I specialize the most. And troubleshooting and problem solving there is like one of my passions. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's weird. I know. Whatever. It's lovely. Um, that's but, also mine. We are all like all entrepreneurs are problem solvers, right? It's just right, like different, right. this, different business type, different strategies, but we are problem solvers. There you go. <laughs> go, girl. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So... So I'll start with setting yourself for success in Q4 by protecting yourself. So that's the, like, the defensive strategy that we can do. And what I advise sellers to do, and I try to push it all the time, is like download your category listing report. For okay. those of you that don't know what the category listing report, that's like the template or the database for our whole catalog. When we download that report, we will see all the information that we have in, in our listings and all the information that we are missing that it, it can potentially be in our listing if we input information there. So that thing about filling in information in the category listing report is very important because when we don't have information in an attribute, and I'm going to uh, put an example. Let's say we're selling a uh, hat right? And there is an attribute that's called uh, size. If we don't put there, because it's, we, we think like, whatever, it's just a hat, it doesn't have any size. Um, when like, that's not relevant. But then somebody or, or a competitor, or even Amazon can come in and say like, you know, this hat is actually like for toddlers. And you're like, no, this is not for toddlers. This is for adults. So they put, I don't know, small kids right? And it's like, that's not accurate. So leaving those spaces blank, leaving those spaces open, it's an opportunity for other people to come in and input information. And that will hurt your listing, that will hurt your catalog. So I'm saying this to start prevent or to start doing this before Q4. It's because the competition can get harder, tougher, so we want to go there like with all the guns that we can have, like all the protection to be protected in every single uh, possible layer, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. For sellers that are not selling their brand, and this, this will go, and that's the other thing, about the category listing report, um, you should be using this technique when your or the listings are yours. Your brand or not, if you have brand registry, it really doesn't matter. But if the listings are yours, you should be protecting your listing. So preventing things that the one that I mentioned before, which, which the seller was selling it, it was wholesale. It was not their listing, but somebody came in and changed the, the images. So if you don't protect yourself, that can happen to you. And if you become very successful during Q4, that I hope everyone listening becomes very successful and their listings rank very well and they start selling a lot, you become a target of the competition. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way to protect yourself. Obviously, setting up, if you have brand registry, setting up your uh, brand catalog manager, making sure that all your ACs are connected to the brand, kind of protecting them from, from having like small changes from other sellers that are not allowed. Um, that's it. That's the first thing. The other side, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about inventory. I know you want to touch some points with the IPI. So this is uh, the IPI is a, a very important metric that we have in, in Seller Central. But this number or this score is not what is setting up the limits or the storage limits and the restock limits that we have in our accounts at the moment. So during the pandemic, Amazon changed that where the IPI was not really the main reason. So if we go to the policy, the policy says there are three reasons to, or sorry, there are three factors that influence your storage and restock limits, which are the sell, your sales volume, your historical IPI, and the available capacities in the warehouse. 
And that's the main thing. And that's the biggest one. This is the one that is playing the big role right now. The capacities in their warehouse. Amazon is suffering because they have a huge demand to like from sellers to use FBA. They don't have like the the full infrastructure to cover that demand. And they're they're also having problems hiring people. So there is a shortage of, of labor. And and that creates an issue for them. That's why we're seeing this this uh, storage limits very volatile. Like one week you have something and the next week you have something else. It's just because their system right now in FBA is not great. So my biggest recommendation here is guys, set your system up to have a hybrid model. Like don't rely in this Q4, don't rely in FBA only. So it's ex this is extremely important. And I think uh, this can be a game changer for sellers that proactively go and try to find a, a, a way to fulfill the orders themselves. Because I believe Amazon will have trouble to fulfill everything during, during Q4. And maybe I'm expecting, and, and this is a hypothetical case, um, I think that FBM offers will have more power um, during Q4 than F FBA. Uh, because sometimes, and I don't know if, if this Noemi happens to you, but as a customer, so I'm a Prime member, mm -hmm. and I purchased something the other day, and it said it was Prime, but it was actually telling me that it will take a week to get to me. Mm -hmm. So imagine that I need that like quick, especially in Q4 where we normally purchase everything late. Like it's almost Christmas and I don't have a gift for my mom. Let me buy it really quick on Prime. And we are expecting that that will get to us in two days. So an Amazon is not, doesn't have the capacity right now to deliver those two days in some cases, not all, but in some cases. So the offers that are FBM that can deliver, maybe not two days, but three, four days, they will win. Mm -hmm. And it will be not only by the algorithm because they, they can win the buy box, but also if customers are looking for a fast option, they will prefer buying something that it can get to them faster than waiting for a week for a prime offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so my biggest recommendation in the inventory side is using a hybrid model and don't rely on FBA for Q4 this year, especially because um, we don't know what's the, like the storage and restock limits are like, we don't know how they're going to be next week, the following week, blah, blah, blah. So I'll say play very, very wise there and don't send all your inventory at once to, to FBA. That's interesting. I because we were talking about inventory and about warehousing, for example, let's give you now. In my case, what happened, uh, we have like three different SKUs for the same ASIN, for example. And one SKU, it's like a product that we used to sell or a version of the product that we used to sell, for example, and it's still there and it's stranded inventory and I cannot take it out. And it's been like that for months, like two, three months. And I've contacted Amazon in this scenario, you know, and they were saying, saying that everything is back up and they are working on it, but it's affecting my IPS score. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one who's happening this issue. Um, yeah. Have how or how to go about it? Because in this scenario, everything is healthy, right? And yeah. that it's still something there that it's, triggering the points going down on IPI. But what is the stranded reason again? Um, so it's different. Let's say it's black, something is black and I have it like black, but a bit like bigger or smaller or something like that. But when the client is buying it, it's not buying the product that they are seeing. So it might be an issue with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's one of the things that I told you about lying yeah. about the offer. And this exactly. is not something that you did intentionally, Correct. but the system sometimes changes. And that's what I told about the changes in the catalog, competitors, right. hijackers. So uh, you have a product in your, in your inventory that is stranded, that is not, I, I, I kind of don't understand what's the reason for the stranded. So it's different from the one that you're selling, but customers yeah. are getting that one. 
no, they're not getting that one. So I made that that listing was an FBA listing. Right. Uh -huh. I made it FBM. So I have control over it until it's sending it home. So it's not available for customers. Does it make sense? Okay. So and the I, units that you have FBA, you want to remove them or you want to sell them? To sell them, but it's like it's a different skew, what I mean to say. Does it make sense? Ah. So uh, three, no. three different skews. The, the one skew that is different to, to not get into that bucket of selling a, a lie, let's say, as you, mm -hmm. you put it, right? I uh, intentionally stranded the inventory until it's going to be sent to me home. So there are like five pieces and I'm still waiting for the uh, Amazon warehouse to just find them and send them home. But they are exactly, doing this. Because you did a removal order. Correct, correct. I did okay. a removal order and they are still not like acting on that. Oh, yes. That's a big thing. Don't worry about it. I, As I'm telling you, the IPI is not a score that is... Um, playing a big role in your account performance at the mm -hmm. moment. Obviously, I'm not telling like, forget about it and just have it like below the threshold. No, no, no. But those things like that is stranded reason is their fault because they have a backlog and removal orders. Right. So that's, that's something that if, if it hurts your IP, it won't, I don't believe it will hurt you in the future as historical IPI because they know that it was their fault. I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm seeing this a lot where people are requesting removal and it's taking months yeah. to, to get the products back. Good thing about it, and you need to be very sure, and, I'm, I'm, and this is a, like a golden nugget if you want to say it, but once you make a removal and the removal is processing, those units stop being a uh, part of your inventory in the sense that they don't take utilization. When they don't take utilization, it's like meaning that they virtually are not in your inventory. So technically, it shouldn't, um, it shouldn't damage your IP. I. Do you understand? So I do. If they're stranded because they're in the process of trans of removal, they don't take uh, they don't take part of your inventory anymore. Therefore, they don't influence the IPI. Sweet. And the big thing there is that the for since the moment you order the removal to the moment they fulfill it, you need to make sure that that is always processing and not cancel. Because if they cancel your removal order, then they say things go back to the inventory, they, then they will take utilization from you and that will impact your IPI. Mm -hmm. But it's not the case when they are in the process of removing. Mm -hmm. Very, like, super important. Yeah, I think that's, that was my mistake because I've seen that they are not sending it, so I ordered once again and I ordered once again and I ordered once again to, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, so, yeah. I, I don't recommend you to do that because like that messes around with their system. So they duplicate orders and orders and orders. And as I tell you, they have a problem with labor. So imagine they, they fulfill the first order and then they will get the other one and they will start looking around the warehouse and they don't find your units. And then they will get another ticket and start looking. So one of the big things that I always preach is like, do Amazon, as efficiently as the, you want them to be. So, and this is something that I can talk about a lot is sometimes we do stuff on Amazon and we don't really align ourselves with them. Mm -hmm. We think as Amazon as the enemy, you know, we think, no, Amazon is the terrible one, the one that punishes us, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But if you really work with them and for them in a sense, where you really know if you want to be efficient, you just make one removal order because that will make them efficient, therefore make them efficient for other sellers and for the system overall. It, that's the same as opening cases after cases after cases for the same issue. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Because not only they can penalize you for it, and I've seen lately like uh, seller uh, support 
like responses saying that you are not allowed to open more cases for the same issue and blah, blah, blah. And they close your cases automatically. And that's because they need to be efficient. They cannot have seven different people looking at your account for the same issue. Yeah. So, so that's one thing. Like, and, and, and if I can say something about winning Q4 and, and winning this game on Amazon is align yourself with their values and with their goals. Because when we do that, we start doing things on Amazon efficiently and they like that. So you won't get in trouble and you will have more, you know, um, room to play. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I hope also our uh, listeners also learn from my mistake in this scenario because I didn't even realize that I'm doing a mistake. So yeah, definitely. And see, like it can be very small things that you're not aware about and you're doing them without, you know, it's very, very small, but it's adding up. That's the yes. idea. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, and that's that's something that I I think that's why I'm I do what I do in the agency is that people sometimes overlook management mm -hmm. and and this is a huge part of of everything on your business because if you don't have Amazon you don't have this channel maybe you have other channels but you don't you won't have this channel which is very important for many of us and and I think doing doing the right things and being efficient in how you do things on Amazon, catalog, inventory, and account health, it translates directly into more money, more time, like more space, better metrics, and Amazon liking us. Yeah. So that's better for the business overall. And, and yeah, try to change that from, from thinking that Amazon is the enemy and when we need to protect ourselves from Amazon and we need to fight Amazon. That's, that's, not, that's not how it's supposed to be. And I don't know, maybe it's because I'm a citizen, I'm a nice citizen of this country and I like them too much. <laughs> oh, maybe no, that's what I'm saying. It. No, it's definitely, as you're saying, I also noticed and also like had a, a, an episode about this topic. Most of the time when you're seeing them as enemy, they will become your enemy, unfortunately. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. so. But is, is there anything that I should have asked and I haven't about this topic? Mm. No, but I can tell to your listeners something else that is very interesting. Uh, there is a program, maybe this will help them in Q4. There is a program called um, FBA New Asings okay. or FBA New Asings program, something like that. If you are launching a new brand and you enroll your Asings into that program, Amazon will not charge you for storage fees, for selling fees, for no sorry, for storage fees, for removal fees, and for um, shipping fees. And they will give you $200 credit for advertising and $100 credit to send it to FBA. So this is huge for people that are like uh, really launching new ASINs in their account. And this doesn't need to be like new products, but new ASINs. Mm -hmm. um, so check that policy, it's called um, just give me one second I'll tell you what's the right name um, and your listeners can go there and look for it enroll their ASINs and get money back that's awesome that's I think awesome. we need to that, that's, that's why it's important to know what are the rules because sometimes Amazon has nice, nice rules right yeah right Okay, that's a golden nugget. Thank you so, so much. And it's, it's no. funny that you mentioned it because I also heard about it but didn't have the time to check. Yes, yes, it's amazing. So I was in a conference in Vegas uh, last week and the, one of the speakers mentioned that they got back since they've been selling on Amazon, they have gotten like $2 million like kind of cash back or, or fee, fees back. Oh, wow just by using that policy. So imagine that. That's definitely a good one. So, okay, the policy is called FBA New Selection. FBA New Selection? Right. Yeah, free monthly storage, free removal, free return processing in all ASINs uh, eligible. And $200 in a sponsor ad promotional promotions and 100 in this kind of shipping carriers. Brilliant. Cool. Brilliant. And anyone with new ACs can roll in, correct? 
Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, if you read the policy, there are like some requirements. Mm -hmm. The seller needs to meet some requirements, and the ASINs also need to have a, like have something kind of ASIN. Um, for example, variations do not count. So if you are selling a hat and you are thinking that you're gonna get like uh, this program for every single color or every single size, that's not real. What you get is the the fee for the parent or one of them only something. Got it. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Brilliant. Vanessa, to be super respectful of your time, this was amazing. I really love, 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 love everything what you shared. Before we wrap up, the questions that I love to ask my guests. The first one is if you would have a superpower, which one would be it? Wow. Okay. <laughs> if I have a superpower, I think uh, my superpower will be flying. Okay. I like That's... to fly. Yes. I mean, the first one that comes into my mind is reading minds. But I don't think that's actually, that's a little bit toxic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll prefer flying. Okay, I'll so be cool. You're sticking like, with flying. Uh, Good. Yes. <laughs> really? Um, Fifty dollars worth of investment that you recently made into purchasing something that helped you with account health. Mm, Fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Does my does my ClickUp membership count? Definitely, yes. It's it's less than fifty dollars a month, but it's more than fifty dollars a year. And um, I love ClickUp. I don't know what you use to track everything in your work. I just started. But... Yeah, I love it. I re oh really, really love God. it, and it's so I organized. <laughs> really like really you don't imagine. Yeah. Yes, yeah. actually, yesterday I was talking to a friend, and I'm like, I just love it. I cannot like I cannot explain how much I love it. So yes, it's completely worth it completely worth it to also change from other places. So I was using monday.com before ClickUp mm -hmm. and I can tell like, it's amazing. The, all the features that ClickUp has are amazing and 10 million times better than any other that I use. And I use a lot in the past. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And they are also like what I love about them. Shameless plug to the ClickUp <laughs> Hopefully you're offering an affiliate link or something next time. But what yeah, I, I, I got an affiliate link. Oh, I'm really? Like, yeah. Really? Yes. yeah, yeah, let's yes. go for it. <laughs> and what, what I wanted to just add there, what I love about them, it's they're always pushing something that it's like new and updating and updating. And it's like, we love it. And it's very, if you're a very visual person, this is your go-to planner, I would say. And also it's very strict, very like, you, you can really track everything. So I would also recommend it from my side. Yeah, 100%. Um, three books? favorite books that you love to read and why? Okay, the last one that I read was The, um, the Almanac of, Rav, uh, of Naval Ravakin. Like mm -hmm. we did that in the Entrepreneur uh, yeah. Book Club. Oh my God, life changing, life changing. It's, it's incredible, incredible. That, that now it's in my top three for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I like one in... in Spanish, well, I read it in Spanish, but it's called The Prayer of the Frog from Anthony de Mello. Um, that's more like a spiritual thing. I love I, that changed my life when I read that book. And um, I'll say the originals from Adam, Adam Grant. That also was like game changer. I don't know. They're not, I'm not going to business. It's more about mindset. And I feel that those are the books that actually, that have been impacting my life more than more like business and technical ones. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I mean, that's not the, the whole top or all of them, the top three, but they're relevant for this. <laughs> I love your list. Really. I'm so fan of Naval. Um, how can people get a hold of you and say hi? Get to know you better, get to know more about your services? Well, the first thing that I'll say, if you speak Spanish, go to listen to our podcast, which Heck are yeah. Become en Español. Heck yeah. Um, yes, uh, I'm the co-host there. So um, yeah, also our channels. So we have 
Instagram, well, all of the social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram is at full time Amazon or mm -hmm. Vanessa Hong. Mm -hmm. um, that's in English. And then for Spanish, we have Amazon at toda hora. Uh, that's on Instagram. And if you want to reach out, just like looking for help or something, you can email me to Vanessa at full time Amazon dot com. Um, I'm very available. Sometimes um, it's better to reach me through Instagram. I see that faster sometimes than, than my email. But yes, am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> You're all over the place. I love it. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Vanessa, you were amazing. Thank you so, so much for your time and for sharing all this valuable information. I certainly hope that all our listeners, or at least you, listener who's listening right now, <laughs> or you, viewer who's watching right now, it was super helpful for you. Because personally, for me, I see it. And the, the reason that we stepped in from beginner salary to advanced salaries, I know when I started, I knew nothing about this. And I know how much or how far would I have been if I would understood all these things that we were talking about today. So please listen to it once again, take care of it. And this is really important as Vanessa was saying, and she put it in very nicely. This is really the country that you now belong to and you have to play by the rules and understand the rules of the country. So Vanessa, yes. once again, thank you so, so much. And see you next Wednesday. Much love to you, bye-bye. It was fun sharing this episode with you. If you found value in what you've heard, please show your love with a subscribe rate and a review of the show. Until next time.